My name is Tim Shields. I'm the founder of photographyacademy.com and I'm going to teach you five ways that you can add contrast to your photos without moving the contrast slider in Photoshop and Lightroom. Now, the reason this came to my attention is because I took a look at the award-winning photos from the most recent photo contest that we just held and there was one theme that came out over and over again and that was the word contrast. So I'm going to show you five ways that you can add contrast to your photos in ways that maybe you didn't think was possible. And for the first one, we're going to look at the color wheel here. The color wheel is super important because when you understand how this thing works, you're going to be able to add contrast to your photos with colors that complement each other. So let's take a look at what happens when you add colors that are on opposite sides of the color wheel. So the first thing that I always notice about the color wheel, it's the colors of yellow and blue. Yellow and blue are opposites on the color wheel. So if you have a photo that can incorporate yellow and blue together where the two colors are kind of beside each other, then you're going to get contrast with complementary colors. The next one is magenta and green. These are two colors that are opposites on the color wheel. And then we have cyan and red. So whenever you're looking at a potential color palette for your photo, you want to keep in mind those four sets of colors that are opposite uh, on the color wheel because when they are opposites on the color wheel, they are complementary colors and they work really well together. So let's take a look at ex an example of that that you've all seen before and it is the flag of Sweden. So what's interesting about the flag of Sweden is that the colors here are perfectly opposite on the color wheel. So we've got that really nice sort of gold yellow with a blue tone and that's why the flag of Sweden works so well with these complementary colors. So when we look at this and how it kind of works out in real life, if you look at this picture here of the Eiffel Tower, we have these beautiful kind of golden yellow tones and they are contrasted by the blue tones that are in the sky. So it's two colors that are complementing each other and it makes the photo look even better. It's like two colors that are just naturally made to be together and they work so well, just in the same way that magenta and green, or sorry, yeah, magenta and green works together and cyan and red. So the second way that you can add contrast to your photo without actually moving the contrast slider in Lightroom is through focus. Now focus is a really big one, especially in macro and especially in portraits. But in this photo of a wasp that was taken by Rita Hamadou, we can see so clearly that we have this smooth textured background and then a super tack sharp and in focus foreground, which is the actual wasp. And when we take a really close look at this, Look at the amazing amount of detail that's here in the face of the wasp and in the eyes. There's a grid here going on with the eyes and then this background is just completely smooth. And so contrast has been created through focus. And this is easy to do. As you know, all you need to do is to use uh, an aperture setting, an f-stop with a very low number like f2.8. And this is usually uh, achieved and sort of the, the effect is magnified when you use a zoom lens and you zoom in all the way. So when you do the two things together, zoom in all the way with your lens and use an aperture setting with a very small number, you're going to get this effect. So looking at a second photo, uh, this one is a butterfly and it's the exact same effect where we have a butterfly and a flower that's in nice focus, it's sharp, and then we have a background that's smooth, and that is what creates uh, contrast within the photo. So the next way that we can create contrast, the third way, is through lights and darks, like shadows and bright areas within the same photo. And this is such a great example of it. If you take a look at the sky in this photo, the sky is just super bright and the reflection, the foreground is also very bright. But now look at the individual camel. There is no detail there whatsoever. It's just silhouette. You can't see anything. Same with the reflection just silhouette. So you've got shadows and you've got brights and both of them together creates 
contrast within the photo and the eye is drawn to contrast just like the eye is actually drawn to movement well in the same way that the eye is drawn to movement the eye is drawn to contrast in the amount of light lights and dark so let's take a look at a second photo and oh i should say this is an award-winning photo by philip o'leary um, he submitted this in our hope for the future photo contest great photo and here's another one jill lancaster she won the best wildlife photo award for this and once again we've got uh lights and darks we have such a dark background and we've got such a light light color tones in the two birds and that pulls in our eye the eye is attracted to the brightest parts of the photo and when the brightest part of the photo is contrasted with a really dark part of the photo you get contrast and it makes the photo pop it just makes it absolutely come alive so the fourth way that you can add contrast to your photo is through changes in color temperature. Now you look at this award-winning photo by Dmitry Pazikov and we can see that he has put in a colder color temperature down at the bottom of the photo. We have a slightly colder color temperature right here in the middle of the photo whereas this part is uh, warmer color temperatures. So because we have warm and then we have cooler we have warm and cooler, it creates contrast within the photo. Even though the colors are almost the same and the eye is drawn to those changes in color temperature and it looks good and it makes the photo pop. And we have one more and this one is from Henry Tom and this is a photo of Vancouver and once again we have really cold color tones in the sky this whole sky here very very cold and then the city lights are very warm we have all those yellows and kind of the golds and it just looks fantastic and the reason that we like the photo is because of that contrast that's created just in the different temperatures also look at the reflections on the water and these are very warm reflections on the water contrasted by the cold color tones in the sky and one other example is this photo of the Rocky Mountains. We have cold color tones in the sky with these blues. And then look at the warm color tones in the rock. So we've got kind of a golden yellow and then the, the blue. And we have two things going on here. We have changes in color temperature and we also have changes in the color wheel. We've got the blue and then the yellow, both contrasting and creating contrast, creates pop, pulls the eye in and makes you say, hey, wow, that looks really good. So the fifth way that you can create additional contrast within your photo is through changes in texture. Now this works when you have some areas of the photo that have a very rough textured surface, a textured look, and then other areas of the photo that are very smooth with no texture whatsoever. And that creates more contrast in the photo. So if you look at the, the skin on these hummingbirds, it's very textured. The wings are very textured. Look at how textured this is. And then the background, completely smooth and non-textured. Same thing with the leaf on the plant, very textured, and then a smooth background. So that creates contrast. Now this is also an award-winning photo by Cindy Jones excellent work on this one so those are the five ways that you can add contrast to your photos the first one is using the color wheel using opposite colors the second one is with focus having areas of the photo completely sharp and in focus and other areas not in focus the third way is with lights and darks shadow and brights within the photo the fourth way is changes in color temperature and the fifth way is with changes in texture. Now, if this is something that interests you, then I would invite you to take a serious look at the Photography Transformation Masterclass. And let me tell you why. This is the Photography Transformation Masterclass, and this is the four-step system, and this is the way to be taking beautiful award-winning photos. If you're ever wondering like, how do I do it? Is, is there a secret? Why is it that some people can take such amazing photos and I can't? Why is it that it seems like I can be in the right place at the right time, but my photos just never look as good as everybody else? Well, this is the way. This is the four-step system that goes from the planning stage of planning out your shot, then to compositions, how to find and how to look for a beautiful composition. This is the artistic side of photography, the part of photography where it doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, even if you're just taking pictures with your cell phone, 
Composition is everything. It's the foundation, the cornerstone of taking great photos. And then there is step three, which is your camera settings. Being able to use a super simple camera setting that's going to get you a perfectly exposed photo that's sharp and in focus. And then step four is post-processing. That ability to paint with light, to create contrast within your photo and make the photo pop and really come alive. Now, if you are wondering, does this work? Will this work for me? Yes, it will. We have around 1,500 people who have been through the Photography Transformation Masterclass. These are just some of the reviews on Facebook. There are three columns of reviews from real people just like you who have taken the Masterclass and who just have glowing reports about what it did for their photography, that it changed their photography, where their photography went from average and boring to exceptional and award-winning, and where they were previously just taking photos that were ho-hum that no one paid attention to, and now they're printing them, putting them on their wall at home. So if you would like to meet one of my next testimonials and success stories, just like Terry Martin here, Kit Rudd, uh, Wendy Klein, Don Haver, and we have more, then I would invite you to take a serious look at the Photography Transformation Masterclass. Just go to photographyacademy.com and there's a link right on the homepage where you can take the free web class. And here it is right here. Take, take the free web class by clicking this button right here and it tells you more about it. So I hope you have enjoyed this and learned how you can use five different ways to create contrast in your photo and make your photos come alive in a way that hopefully was new to you. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. See you in the next video. I am a photographer. I am a photographer. I am a photographer. I am a photographer. We are the photographers and we are different from everyone else. I explore. I explore. I explore. We explore, we look for the beauty in the little things, and we find the greatness in the big things. We find beauty in places no one else sees. I create. I create. I create. We create. We create our own art. We freeze time. We create lasting memories and leave behind a legacy forever. I inspire others. I inspire others. I inspire others. We inspire. And through creating, we inspire others and move them through the emotion in our photos. I am a photographer. 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 We are the photographers and we are lifelong learners. We never stop moving forward. Join me and together, let's explore, create, and inspire. Click the button and take the free web class to learn more.